Hello, this is a uh, video of common algebra word problems made easy. This particular version is about distance is equal to rate time time problems. The original common algebra word problems made easy uh, involved consecutive integer problems, triangle problems, coin uh, problems, what I call hamburger hot dog problems, and investment problems. In addition to this version, I will probably also create a third version uh, concerning um, solutions or concentrations of materials. So distance is equal to rate times time problems are very common. These are the problems such as you know two trains depart the station going in opposite directions, you know going at certain rates and things like that. So. The first slide here is understanding what it means to be distance is equal rate times time. We all have experience of this from um, you know, riding in cars and so forth. So, for example, if I travel 60 miles per hour for three hours, well, I multiply the rate, which is another name for speed, uh, of 60 miles per hour times the time, and I get that we went 180 miles. So if you look at this, um, I look at this here, sorry, I didn't mean that one to go up. I have miles per hour times hours, the hours cancel, and I have 60 times 3 is 180 miles. Here's another example. I travel 500 miles for 8 hours. What is the average speed? Well, distance is equal to rate times time. Uh, the distance is 500. I traveled eight hours. I don't know the rate here. To get the rate, I'm going to divide both sides by eight, and I get R is equal to 500 over eight, or 62.5 miles per hour. A third example. Um, here I don't know the time. I traveled 500 miles at 50 miles per hour. How many hours did I travel? So distance is equal to rate times time. Uh, 50 is equal to, uh, I'm sorry, 500, the distance, uh, is equal to 50 miles per hour times t. Here we're going to divide both sides by 50, and we get t is equal to 10 hours. Now all that was just as way as background to understand what distance is equal to rate times time means. Um, we're going to get some more complicated problems where we're going to use these concepts and, uh, and, and solve things. But before we do that, I want to go back to the general method to solve these problems that I talked about in the first version of the video. And that, that is, first of all, take time and read the problem. Um, you're going to decide what information you're given, what is being asked, and this is very important. You need to draw a diagram in all these. Some, in some word problems, you really don't need to draw a diagram. These you do. Um, remember that there is one piece of missing information, or, or there's often more than one piece of missing information in these things. And um, so, after you've done the diagram, after you've thought about it a little bit, um, you're going to define one variable, and you should write this down. Always write this down. Let n equal, you know, the time taken to get from, you know, San Diego to Los Angeles, if that's in the problem. Um, using the same variable, you're going to define any other unknowns. Uh, you're going to write an equation. So basically, this whole process is one of figuring out the problem and then mathematizing it. Uh, we mathematize it by writing an equation. Then we're going to solve the equation, and then we're going to find, go back and find uh, any other answers by using the definitions you made. So let me um, go on. And next, I want to show you about what it means to draw in these distance, rate, and time problems. 
And usually there's actually a drawing and a chart you will want to do on just about any of these problems. So here I made a drawing in it from a start of a problem. It says two trains start in San Diego heading north, one traveling at 60 miles per hour and the other at 40 miles per hour. Well, I've showed train A, train B, I've showed their speed, you know, I can show time if I know it. Um, and then in this particular problem, it's one where we're going to subtract things. So there's 240 miles apart. So this is a subtraction problem. Drawing the diagram often really helps me to do that. In these problems, people go in the same direction. Sometimes they go in opposite directions. Um, sometimes they're going exactly the same distance. Um, sometimes they're not exactly the same distance as here. And then, besides that drawing, if you look down here, you're also going to do a, a chart. And I'll call it the D is equal RT chart. I like to put my Ds on the left. Some people put it in different locations. But if you look down below here, you get D is equal to RT. You're going Write down the information you know. Here I have train A, train B, you know, this may be Sally, Sam, you know, whoever is involved in the problem. But you're going to put the rate if you know it. Sometimes the rate may be a variable. Um, you're going to put the time, and here it's a simple T and T. And then often you're going to have the rate times the time is going to be the distance. Sometimes you'll be given exactly what the distance is, but sometimes it'll just be, uh, you know, 60 times t is the distance and that's all we can do. Uh, and then we're going to do something more to it. So the drawing and the chart are crucial to these problems and really help you, especially this d is equal rt uh, chart. Um, so I'm going on to the next slide. And the next slide tells you that basically we have three types of problems when we do these. Um, the first type of problem, problem we're going to look at is where we subtract the two different distances involved uh, to find the answer. Often, and probably more often than subtracting distances, the two distances are going to be equal, and so we'll look at, at a couple problems where the distances are equal, and then we're going to look at some problems where we add distances. So moving on to that, I'm going to go to a problem where we're going to subtract the distances. I'm telling you that ahead of time in an actual problem, you're going to have to figure it out. So I say two trains leave San Diego at 9 a.m. heading north. The passenger train travels at 60 miles per hour. The freight train travels at 40 miles per hour. When will the trains be 240 miles apart? Uh, on these problems, you assume that you know everything is working fine, and there must be two different tracks, and they're not going to run into each other or anything like that. So, looking at this, the first thing is to figure out what's happening. Well, they're both leaving at the same time. We assume they're on like parallel tracks. Um, the one's traveling faster. So at some point, they're going to be 240 miles apart and, uh, because the one's going to be moving ahead of the other at a 20 miles per hour difference. So we're going to do this, and this is a pretty simple problem that you could probably figure out non-algebraically, but I'm putting it here so we can help you understand the algebra and how to mathematize this. So the first thing is draw the picture. So I've drawn the picture here, and if you look here, you know, this is going faster than the other one. Train A is going faster than the other one. That's the passenger train. And so if you take the distance it's going, in the shorter distance the other is going, that's going to be the 240 miles they're apart. So if we could take this distance minus this distance, that's going to equal 240. So that's going to really help us get our equation here in a moment. Um, I look forward, to, I look here, and this is where I've done my chart. I've said the rate for train A is 60, the rate for train B is 40. The time, because we're asking the, uh, when will the train, so when means time, the time here is going to be equal. They're going to be 240 miles apart at the same time. 
And then um, I multiplied these two, the 60 times t is 60t, 40 times t is the 40t. Now, uh, as I said, we're going to subtract the two distances. So, so I'm going to take 60t minus 40t, that's going to be, you know, what's happening here. Before I actually set up that equation, though, there's one other thing I need to do. And if you remember that is, you know, first we need to define a variable. Here there's only one variable to define. And that's, I'm going to say, let t uh, equal the time and hours when the two trains are 240 miles apart. So that's really something we do in conjunction with building our chart here because, you know, it's part of our chart. Um, so that's something we're going to do each time as we build the chart. Um, so I said you take the, the one distance minus the other distance is going to be 240 miles. That's when, you know, if you take the two distances, um, subtract them, you know, subtract the um, smaller distance from the larger one, you're going to get 240. We can solve this quite easily by combining like terms. We get 20t is equal to 240. We're going to divide each side by 20, and we're going to get 12 hours. It said we started at 9 a.m. We're going to add 12 hours to 9 a.m. That's going to be at 9 p.m. So when will the trains be 240 miles apart? At 9 p.m. Okay, let's go on to another problem, and probably uh, the next two types of problems are probably more common than the subtracting the distances. And these are problems where we're, uh, first the distances are equal. So let's look at those. Distances are equal. And one type of problem is called a catch-up problem. So here uh, I have Sally leaves home at 7 a.m. traveling at 40 miles per hour. Um, discovering that his wife Sally forgot her briefcase Sam leaves home at 7.30, traveling at 60 miles per hour. So, in other words, Sally leaves for the business meeting or something. Um, Sam is getting ready for work or whatever and notices that she forgot her briefcase. Sam jumps in the car, travels as fast as he can here at 60 miles per hour to catch up with Sally. Again, these don't have to be realistic. If he's on a freeway, he's probably not going to be able to find her and so forth. Uh, but these are math problems, and they're designed to help us to start to learn how to mathematize things, which is a critical skill in algebra and any math. So, uh, so there's the basic, there's the basic, um, there's the basic uh, diagram. Sally leaves at 7 a.m. Sam leaves at, I wrote down 7 a.m. It should be 7:30 a.m. Correct. Um, uh, but he's traveling at 60 miles per hour. So going to go to the next part, I wrote my chart here, and I'm going to go on to the next part and, and define my variable first because really I, I need to do that as part of my chart. So I said in defining my variable, I said let t equal Sally's time, okay? Let t equal Sally's time. So t is Sally's time. Well, Sam left at 7.30. So 7.30 minus 7 o'clock is, is, is 30 minutes, or I'm going to do it all in hours since the speed is miles per hour. So it's just about always best to put these things in hours uh, and keep the units the same. So um, here I put 30 minutes is a half hour or 0.5 hours. So his time is t minus 0.5. In other words, t minus a half hour because he left a half hour later. Uh, so we have uh, the rates and times here. All I'm doing is saying, well, her distance is 40t. His distance is 60 times t minus 0.05. So his rate times his time. Okay, and I can show you that here. I put t minus 0.5 hours of Sam's time. Now, what we know about these things is that they both, both Sam and Sally leave from home, and he's going to catch up with her at some point, 
And so their distances are going to be identical. They're taking the same path. Their distances are going to be identical. So all I'm going to do is take this 40t is equal to 60 times parentheses t minus 0.5 and I'm going to solve that equation. So in other words, the two distances are equal in a catch-up problem. So uh, I put that again here. Sam and Sally both travel the same distance. So we have 40t is equal to 60 times parentheses t minus 0.5. What property do we use? Yes, distributive property we're going to use to do that 60 times t minus 60 times 0.05. So when we do that distributive property, we're going to get 40t is equal to 60t minus 30. 60 times uh, a half is 30. Um, we have, uh, you know, plus, you know, the minus 0.5 is the same as plus a negative 0.5. So that's why it stays negative there or, or a minus sign there. Uh, I'm going to uh, subtract 60 from both sides. So over here, I'm going to subtract 60. That gets t gets rid of t on the right side. I add 60 on this side. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. Subtract 60 on the right side. Subtract 60 on the left side. Um, and you know, you might get a little scared here because I'm getting a negative number. If I subtract 60t from 40t, I get negative 20t. That's okay because my next step is I'm going to divide both sides by negative 20. And uh, a negative divided by a negative is going to be a positive. So after I divide both sides by negative 20, I get t is equal to 1.5, uh, 30 over 20 or 3 over 2 or 1 and a half or 1.5 hours. Remember that t here is Sally's time. So I'm going to add the 1.5 onto 7 a.m. 7 a.m. and uh, 1.5 hours more is going to be 8.30. Okay? So Sam's going to catch up with Sally at 8.30. Okay? On to the next problem. Other distance uh, equal problem. It's a round trip problem. So round trip problems are generally distance equal problems. So here's a round trip problem. It's just Sally this time. <clears throat> Sally travels from work to home in the morning at 60 miles per hour. It's bad traffic. She travels home by the same route only at 20 miles per hour. So there's an accident or something on the way home, so she's going much slower. The round trip is one hour. Answer three quest questions. And this shows you that it's not always time questions. I'm actually answering three different questions here. How long did it take to get to work? How long did it take to get home? And how far is the one-way distance between home and work? Uh, so I actually want to know the time here, and I also want to know um, the uh, distance uh, to go to work. So I'm going to show you the diagram, but I'm also going to define the variable here. So I said let t is equal to the time from home to work. So t is the time from home to work. Now the next one, to get back home from work to home, I'm going to define that as 1 minus t. Now this gets a little confusing, uh, but as you think about it, it's really not. We know that the total time is one hour. The whole round trip is one hour. We, if she takes t minutes to get to work, then the time to get back to work, the remaining time, the rest of the time, is what we're looking at. So it's one hour minus the time it takes to get to work. And so that's going to be the, the time from go to work to home. Hopefully that makes sense. And so with that, I know that uh, 60 times t is home to work. I know that 20 times the quantity 1 minus t, 
which I show here, is the time home, or the distance home, I should say. We know these two distances are equal because from home to work and work to home, she's going the same route, and so this is the same distance. She's just taking a different amount of time and going at a different speed. So what we're going to do is write an equation where these two distances are equal. We're just going to put 60t is equal to 20 times the quantity 1 minus t. So there's that equation. Uh, next, we're going to do distributive property again. Doing distributive property, we get 20 times 1 minus 20t. And then we're going to add, because this is a minus 20t here, we're going to add 20t to both sides, and we're going to get 80t is equal to 20. I'm going to divide both sides by 80, and I get t is equal to 20 over 80, or we can reduce that to 2 or over 8, and 1 over 4, which is 0.25. Uh, 0.25 hours or a quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. So, to answer the questions now, we know how long did it take to get to work? Well, that's what T is, that's 15 minutes. How long did it take to get home? Well, that's the 1 minus um, T, so 1 minus 0.25 uh, is 0.75 hours or 45 minutes to get back. And then the final question is this, the distance between home and work. You can go back to either of these equations. Let's go to the easiest one here, or the easy, either of these distances, because these distances are the same. Let's just go 60t. Well, we know what t is now. It's 0.25 hours. Um, so if we go 60 uh, miles per hour times 0.25 hours, we're going to get the, the number of miles in uh, a fourth of 60 is 15 miles. Okay? Now, on to uh, a problem where we add distances. So, on this one, I say Sally and Sam start from their home at 8 a.m. on their bicycles. Sally heads west at 8 miles per hour. Sam heads east at 12 miles per hour. When will they be 60 miles an hour apart? So I have up here the little diagram. Sally's heading in one direction uh, at 8 miles per hour. They both leave at the same time. Sam leaves at the uh, same time leave going the opposite direction at 12 miles per hour. Let's define a variable. The variable here is going to be pretty easy. It's just one variable and there's nothing else to find. And we're going to say let t equal the time when they're 60 miles uh, apart. So I'm going to show you the diagram and I'm going to do the variable. So let t equal time um, when they're 60 miles apart. So his or her rate, Sally's rate is 8. Her time is, t, uh, uh, the time is t. So her distance is 8t. Uh, Sam rate is 12. Um, the time when they're 60 miles apart is t. Uh, his distance is 12t. These two distances are not equal. Sam's going faster and they're both going the same time. So Sam is traveling further than Sally. But what we know about these two distances, if I take the 8t that Sally did, you know, Sally's distance, and if I add to that Sam's distance, we know it's 60 miles. So this gives us our equation. So Sam's, Sally's distance plus Sam's distance is equal to 60 miles. So we go 8t plus 12t is equal to 60. We're going to combine like terms, so we get um, 20t is equal to 60. Uh, we're going to divide both sides by 20. And then we get t is equal to 3 hours. So when will they be 60 miles apart? In 3 hours. Now, here's a tougher one. Uh, we're also going to add distance. Oh, and also it asks when. When they say when, 
they probably want to know the clock time. So we take the three hours and add it to the 8 a.m. and we get 11 a.m. Now, here's the other one. Um, we're going to add distances, but we're not asking the time here. Uh, it tells us the time they take. We want to know their different rates. So they're not telling us the rates exactly. So in this one, it says Sally and, La and Sam leave home traveling in an opposite direction. Sam travels five miles per hour faster than Sally. In four hours, they are 100 miles apart. Find Sally's and Sam's rate. So there's two things we need to find, Sally's rate and Sam's rate. Here's a little picture. Sam's going faster, so he will actually travel further. Um, Sally's going slower, so she's going to travel less. But we know that both of them together travel 100 miles. So that, here's our picture. Let's get our, um, here I have let R equal Sally's rate. Sam's rate is 5 miles per hour more. So Sam's rate is R plus 5. Um, from this, we know this is Sally's rate, 4 hours. They both went 4 hours. Sam's faster rate of R plus 5 times 4 hours. Sam's distance is going to be 4 times R plus 5. Sally's rate is going to be 4R. We're going to add these two rates together, and we know it's equal to 100 miles. So uh, let's uh, get the equation now, and we get 4R plus 4 times the quantity R plus 5 is equal to 100. We're going to do distributive property. So here we're going to get 4R plus 4 times 5, or 20. Um, so we'll do that step. We're going to combine like terms here. So we have 4R plus 4R is 8R plus 20. We're going to subtract 20 from both sides. We get 8R is equal to 80. Divide both sides by 8. And we get R is 10 miles per hour. We have to go back and look at our uh, how we define the variable. That's Sally's rate. Uh, Sam's rate is going to be R plus 5 or 10 plus 5. And that Sam's rate, or, or, so 15 is Sam's rate or you know, rate is another name for speed. Okay, so that's another uh, place where we're adding the distances uh, to find the rates. Uh, well, we didn't ask the question. Uh, Sally went 40 miles because in, in a particular question could ask how far she went. So we took 4 hours times 10 miles per hour and we get uh, 40 miles. Sam went 60 miles. In other words, 4 hours times 15 miles per hour or 60 miles. So that gives you some idea of uh, a sampling of some uh, distance is equal rate times time problems. They get you know, more complicated, but with this basic background and using this approach, uh, you can solve any types of these. So remember, I always do the, the diagram, you know, basic sketch here. Do the distance is equal rate times times chart then you're going to, you know, as you're doing that, you're going to define a variable. Like here, I define this variable. In terms of that variable, I'm going to define any other things we need. Like here's Sam's rate. I'm going to then write an equation. I'm going to determine if I'm adding distances, subtracting distances, whether the distances are equal. I'm going to solve the equation. And then I'm going to go back to the beginning uh, to realize that here what our R is equal to 10 means that's Sally's speed and R plus 5 or 10 plus 5 is Sam's speed. Um, and, you know, they can, problems can ask you for the time, the rate, or the distance. Here they asked for the rates. Uh, they could have asked for the distance here. And we've seen several problems where they asked for the time. So hopefully this will help. And uh, together with the uh, first installment of uh, uh, common algebra word problems made easy, uh, this uh, should help you. And with that, I will end this video.